This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Business class is dying. We knew first class was on the way out, but business class has become a huge victim of the COVID-19 pandemic in a way no one would have anticipated. Here is how COVID-19 will change business class forever. Since airlines were introduced to the world in the early 1900s, innovation and change to onboard products has accelerated exponentially, to the point where 2019's innovations alone were greater than what airlines used to achieve in a decade or more. If we look back to the start, there was one cabin. All flying was uncomfortable and purely pragmatic. Planes were tiny, quite dangerous, and rare. Still. Flying was a revolutionary new form of transportation that dramatically reduced travel time. As a result, it was expensive. Prices were sky high, meaning that only the elite, today's first class passengers, could afford to fly. Eventually, innovations to aircraft size and efficiency led to the introduction of economy class seats, a cheaper form of flying for the masses, although it was still astronomically expensive by today's standards. So from the start, there was normal class, first class if you will, and then economy class. It wasn't until 1955 that first class and economy were officially separate cabins with their introduction at TWA. The company had furnished us with four first-class tickets, and we simply exchanged them for five tourist tickets at no extra cost. It meant we wouldn't get fancy meals served to us in the luxury rear section of the plane, but we were happy just to eat our picnic box lunches in the more crowded forward part. There was still nothing luxurious about flying though. Sure, catering had become quite the thing on board, but seats were equivalent to today's premium economy, and you can bet the ride was louder, bumpier, and more rustic. A few decades later, three main cabins started to form. First class, business class, and economy class. The difference between first and business class wasn't very large, neither was the difference between business and economy. All seats were relatively comfortable and all passengers would likely have been served food. It wasn't until a couple of decades ago that two innovations led to a true differentiation in cabins. The first was the lie flat seat in first class. It started as a recliner and progressed into a fully flat seat. This was when first class became a truly luxurious experience, one that was certainly preferable to business or economy. The second innovation occurred at the other end of the plane, not at legacy airlines, but rather with the introduction of low-cost airlines. Suddenly, economy class was attainable to the masses, and traditional airlines were forced to compete. They did this by shrinking their seats, reducing amenities to cut costs, and of course, lowering their prices. Here we have the standard flying experience for the past decades. First class being the gold standard, economy class being miserable, and business class being, well, right in between perfectly comfortable for the frequent traveler at a reasonable price, usually with a recliner seat, plenty of legroom, and decent food. Then, in the late 90s, came an innovation that would ultimately make first class obsolete. The Lie Flat Business Class Seat At the time, this was a mind-blowing improvement to onboard comfort although the difference between first and business class was still huge. For example, the airline that introduced lie flat seats, British Airways, had eight seats across in business, while they only had four seats across in first. Despite the difference, it turned out that what people really wanted was that bed, and suddenly they weren't willing to spend two or three times as much for better food and service in first class. As competition continued to shape the industry through the 2000s, business class became so good that first class truly became obsolete, and thus began the push forward of airline cabins. Business class was turning into an extremely affordable version of first class, essentially killing the first class cabin. Airlines in the US were among the first to remove first class altogether, replacing it with products called business first. Business class was literally pushing first class out of the plane and became the forward most cabin. But wait, 
What about the people who still wanted a true business class experience in the traditional sense? Something in between luxury and suffering. A cabin offering good value for money that business travelers would be happy with, meaning more legroom, fewer middle seats, and possibly even lounge access. Enter the birth of premium economy, the replacement for business class. Can you see what has happened here? There has been a natural evolution where each cabin evolved to replace the cabin above it, purely due to competitive forces making airlines one-up each other. Today, we still have first business and economy on every long-haul flight, just with a different name. Business, premium economy, and economy. Most significantly, these cabins have vastly different price tags from what they once had, achievable through advances in airplane technology. Yes, there is still demand for first class in a few of the world's richest markets, and it will hopefully never fully disappear. For example, markets from London to Los Angeles or New York, Hong Kong to New York, Singapore to Sydney, etc., can still sustain three or even four cabins with first class. Even prior to the pandemic, everything was far from peaceful in the airline cabin world. Business class is starting to be threatened by innovations further back in the plane, with several airlines looking into lie-flat seating options in premium economy or even economy. For example, in February of this year, Air New Zealand unveiled plans to put beds in economy class called Skynest, which would allow passengers to pay for a certain number of hours in a bed. By the way, how crazy is it that this was announced only in February? With all that's happened since then, I genuinely thought this announcement was at least a year ago. This evolution of economy class will take a few decades, but there are signs that this push forward is continuing. Ultimately, I see two outcomes here. If economy class is somehow revolutionized and becomes much more comfortable, I suspect an even more basic economy would be introduced at an even lower price with less comfort than current day economy class. The other option, which is more likely in my opinion, is that cabins will dissolve in a sense. More on that once we've discussed what is happening in 2020. Surprise, surprise, 2020 has been a true hellhole and has changed the world drastically in a way no one was prepared for. When airlines anticipated the next economic recession, they knew it was a risk to install dozens of business class seats on their aircraft. Some airlines took the risk, like United, who reconfigured several planes like their 767s in extremely premium heavy layouts, and others started moving towards smaller cabins like Delta. One thing none of them could have anticipated though was how different this recession would be to previous ones, where business travel would typically rebound within a few years. This recession will change the way business is done forever. If there is one thing the business world has learned in the past year, it's that things can get done online via Skype or Zoom, and the cost of sending employees around the world on $10,000 business class tickets perhaps isn't always worth it, even in good times. The world has adapted and everyone has been forced to learn how to do things online, which is a huge win for the environment. But for airlines, I can guarantee that this will result in fewer business travelers permanently. Let's take the Swedish market as a predictive example. In the past decade, Swedish domestic flights have decreased, partly due to environmental concerns, but more importantly from an airline perspective, a reduction in demand due to teleconferences. Now, let's look at what inspired me to make this whole video. A statement from ANA CEO about their upcoming long-haul low-cost carrier. His outlook on the future of premium travel is grim, going so far as to say that he doesn't think business travel will ever return to pre-COVID levels. He believes, as I do, that leisure travel will be increasingly important going forward. What does this mean for business class? Well, less demand means airlines should install fewer seats, which in turn means they will buy smaller aircraft. Let me explain. Looking at Qatar Airways, they have 46 Q suites on their A350-1000. That's a lot of seats to sell for several thousand dollars each. They will soon start taking delivery of A350-1000s with half that number of business class seats, which was their plan even before the pandemic. This will allow them more flexibility and obviously means there will be more economy seats. Now, assume they can never sell more than 24 business class seats again, even on their most lucrative routes, like London. So fine, 
they'll send their new A350 1000s with fewer business class seats instead of the older ones. But what happens to their smaller routes that can't even sustain that number of business class seats anymore, and certainly not a hundred extra economy seats? They can't just keep shrinking the business cabin and replacing it with economy seats because there won't be enough economy demand. The answer is clear. The death of business class will lead to smaller planes being even more popular. The A350-900 and 787-9 will be the largest aircraft in many airlines' fleets, and the a321 Neo LR will probably become a staple on many routes with business cabins between 12 and 16 seats. Looking at Delta, their new aircraft all have around 30 business class seats, which seems wise. If I was an airline like Qatar Airways taking delivery of 46 seaters, I'd be worried. So we're reaching the end, and here is my theory of the most likely outcome of COVID-19 on business class. Besides fewer seats, what will business class look like as it evolves and airlines are forced to accept that business travel may never fully return? The answer is to think Ryan Air, but not in an entirely bad way. Airlines will need to fill business class seats somehow, and there is one way they can push prices down to attract more leisure travelers, by unbundling business class. This is a trend that started a couple of years ago, with Emirates being one of the first airlines to do this, somewhat. However, the first example of a truly unbundled business class was just launched last month by Zip Air Tokyo, the new long-haul low-cost subsidiary of Japan Airlines. So what does it mean to unbundle business class? Well, what does Ryanair do? They sell you a seat for dirt cheap and charge you for everything else. Business class on Zip Air is the same. You pay an unbeatable price for your LifeLab business class seat, but the ticket does not include luggage, food, or seat selection. You get nothing unless you pay extra. In my opinion, this is actually a positive development. Being able to customize your fare is the way of the future. If you don't want to travel with luggage, why should you pay for it? If you'd rather have a $5 sandwich from the terminal, why should you pay for mediocre business class food? Imagine if airlines can shave a few hundred dollars off business class, taking a business class round trip from Europe down to sub 1,000 euro prices. This will mean more upper middle class travelers can afford to fly comfortably. This will ultimately be a loss for airlines in comparison to pre-COVID, since business class used to be their biggest source of revenue. But one thing is for sure though, business travelers will not return in the same numbers as before, and airlines will be forced to change the way they do business, literally. Business class as the airlines previously knew it is all but dead. So I have a quick question for you guys. Do you like learning new skills? Well, today's video sponsor Skillshare makes it easy to learn anything fast. You can discover new skills ranging from marketing to editing in a simple format to help you retain as much knowledge as possible. Whether you sneak in a quick session at breakfast or learn an entirely new skill on an upcoming flight, most Skillshare classes are under 60 minutes so you can learn efficiently. Right now, I'm taking a course called Storytelling for Leaders by Key Keith Yamashita, where I'm learning all about the importance of telling your story and how to do it more effectively. This has also helped me tell stories like the one in this video. I also love that you can read reviews so you know which class suits you best. So guys, join the millions of other curious learners and discover thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics with a free trial of Skillshare if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link at the top of the description.